<laughs> oh, right, the other we, are, one. we are live. Woo! Take two. <laughs> All right. This is a second show that we've done today. And uh, it's amazing how just our energy flow after noon starts to go down. That's why we highly recommend Revive Well. We'll be chatting a little bit about that at the end. We'll just throw that body support in. But today's topic, welcome to 2016. We are so excited to be launching into the new year with Optimal Wellness. Amy and I have done several blabs before and uh, promised in the new year to do more Optimal Wellness. If I can get myself situated here, I can't figure out which which is the best. Direction. I'm, I'm going the same way. I'm, it's I'm, like which which direction is the opposite direction. <laughs> we have, we don't have a problem with that this morning. So what's going on now? Yeah, yeah. This is the end of the day. Go the opposite yeah. way. <laughs> going the opposite way. So welcome to 2016, and this is an, an incredible topic, and and really this is an invitation for you. It's a simple practice. We're going to keep this short and sweet. We're going for 20 minutes here, and just to give you a little deeper focus on what we're doing. It's really uh, a, a simple practice to add more peace and purpose. As I mentioned earlier this morning, clarity of focus leads to that accuracy of response. When you have a touchstone of focus and intention, it's easy to realign your words, thoughts, deeds, and actions with your touchstone as you're going through your day of life, which is a gift. Every day is a gift. So we're gifted with a new year of life, Amy. Isn't that great? We're excited. We're excited to be here. And we talked about that this morning in terms of our clarity of focus. So simply put, the details of this, I'm pulling from a, a, a recent blog post that you can find at laurenemiller.com. It's the first post there. And it's an invitation to create a theme thought for 2016. What is your theme thought? Why the importance of a theme thought in 2016? Simply because it gives us that sense of uh, realignment uh, to resurrect that clarity of focus so that we don't get spun out by all of the shiny objects and the to-do to list. We also mentioned earlier this morning that there is, a, there is a shift in energy that happens when you're going from one phase of life into the next. And as we're entering 2016, we are literally transitioning out of 2015. We're not only transitioning out of last year, we're also transitioning out of more of a, a relaxed mode coming off of the holiday season. So with that, there's, there's a lot of uh, opportunities for fragmentation because too often we're gripping a hold of those things that are ready to be released in life. And so this is a simple practice we're going to be sharing today and speaking about today to help you catapult out of 2015 and into 2016 with that clear purpose in mind as you move forward. So I invite Amy to share because you did an awesome job this morning and I I, I did not push the record button. <laughs> so here we are again. As I, as I, oh, really? the, Second the, time's a charm. <laughs> we for good to those who love God. So I know that there's a reason why we're doing take two on this today. And uh, you mentioned this morning, and I'm going to pose the question to you before I get into more of the specifics about the importance of this practice of creating your theme thought for 2016. Oh, I wanted to mention, Amy, before I flip on over to you, actually, you're, you're that way, before I flip on over to you, that when you create a theme, the definition of the word theme is uh, simply to create an ambiance, to create a sense of space that is dedicated to one specific thought, one specific goal or desired intention that supports the person you're committed to being. And, and for the purpose of, of this invitation, we're, we're truly focusing on alignment of the person you're committed to being with your words, thoughts, deeds, and actions. So you get that definitiveness of purpose moving forward into 2016. So what's your ambiance and what is your theme thought, your theme ambiance thought that is going to be that anchor to pull you back to that space so that you can show up with the best version of you. Because as we all know, that doesn't always happen when we're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or sick. So with that said, Amy, what's your theme thought and why is it important? 
Oh gosh, Lauren, my theme thought is simplification. Simplifying life um, because I understand that I take on too much. That's just yeah. what I do. I'm the ever ready bunny. Um, and and it gets me into a pickle a lot of times because I overextend myself and then I start to fatigue out and then it 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 changes how I show up. Instead of showing up the way I want to show up, I show up as the tired girl or the stressed girl or the overwhelmed girl. I don't want, you know, you don't want to be that way. So, mm -hmm. what, what I, you know, you really realize that your environment really does change and shift how you feel inside. It's a reflection of how we are on the inside. So, uh, and I will totally admit that in 2015, I took on more than I could chew. I just kept saying yes. Sure, I'll do the interview. Sure, I'll do the summit. Sure, I'll do all these things. And 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 I was just stretched because I was trying to put myself out there. But if you show if if you're stretching yourself to to do something that's putting yourself out there, you want to show up as your best self. Yeah. <laughs> and, but, uh, and if you're if you're doing too much, you can't. So um, so I just really realized that my environment, the clutter in my head, it's simplifying everything so that I can show up as my best. Well, I'll tell you, I'm writing it down as 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 a um, throwing it out there. Um, simplicity is 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 a very very powerful uh, theme thought because what it does is it 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 gives you that instant anchor to be able to ask yourself a simple question: What is essential and what is non-essential? What are those things that align with what I value most? What are those high priority projects that I'm going to put before noon because our motivation muscle is the highest before noon? And as we mentioned earlier today, our, our next topic for next week, if we're still wearing this earth suit, is going to be productivity because there's certain systems that need to be in place in order to catapult us into productivity. Uh, any successful organization or um, infra has an infrastructure of, of systems in place. So we'll talk more about it. But simplicity is an awesome theme to be entering 2016. And so I encourage you, Amy, as we spoke about this morning, write that down and then go a little bit deeper in terms of uh, what does simplicity look like, feel like, sound like to you? So you wow. have that clear focus as a touchstone. As, as uh, many have heard me say before, stress is simply... Uh, the opportunity. It's an, it's an invitation. It's literally the body's invitation to identify and adjust our perceptions. So as we're jumping into 2016, this is an invitation to identify and adjust quicker today than yesterday in our ability to let go of the non-essentials, release those things that don't align with the person we're committed to being, and to resurrect that theme thought to the front lines. So simplicity is one that can be my sub theme thought. And perhaps many people uh, you guys can jump on that as well. Uh, less is more and the, the less distractions that we have. Oh, the other thing that you spoke about earlier today, which I thought was was of, of high value too, is, is a simple act to create more simplicity is to declutter. And you- Absolutely. And, that. It, and it's not just about things. It's, it's about, um, it, well, although clutter does create stress, we all know that. I mean, if you can't find things, you start to get stressed out or, I mean, just too many things actually clutter up your, your mind. And I mean, it's like, where is that paper I'm looking for? You know, where is that, where's that important uh, bill that I put somewhere? You know, and I'm pretty organized. I'm nice really chaos, organized. right? <laughs> I'm kind of keeping a, a tight screen here on my office. <laughs> I know, I know, really, we're not shifting that way. No, it's actually, it's not too bad because I am putting some good systems in place, but it's still a process where, you yeah. know, you still you think that works and then you have to reshift it and do something else. Absolutely. But I, I really yeah. think about the clutter that goes on in your head, you know, and it's about, I know that one of my words, because I actually sort of do this sort of idea of having a theme word and, um, and, pretty much every month. And uh, the past the past quarter, I would say, I was practicing non-reaction because uh, there's a lot of Great things work. that happen dur our, during our day where there's a tech problem and you're like, oh, but I'm out of time and the, and the, 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 the link isn't working and the email needs to go and my VA is three hours ahead and oh my gosh, I can't get it done. And 
today, Mr. Printer decided to just shut down and I'm, you know, and I'm teaching a class tonight and I'm like, well, that's just great. I'm going to show up with, you know, no paper, but that's okay. Yeah, I'm going to just tell them what they're going to get and then I'm going to email it to them. So they'll still have it today when they get home, but I won't show up with like, you know, handouts and everything. Yeah. It, and I, I just, you know, I went, don't react to that. Please. It, it, it's almost like a test. It's a trial. Yeah. I look at it as a trial. Um, and also, you know, coming into your day with a positive attitude by practicing gratitude at the very start of the day gratitude. really helps to put that shield of armor around you so that when these things happen, you're able to say, I'm not reacting. I'm all ready for you. Yeah. Um, it's a standing, I see standing it space. Like, I mean, it's like the dude, the, the dude is over there shooting arrows, and you're like, I'm sorry, I've got my metal on. You cannot <laughs> penetrate <laughs> this. <laughs> I refuse to react. <laughs> so, totally. I mean, those kinds of things. And then, you know, as you as you know, this morning, I, I told you about getting off track from having yeah. company and not sleeping well. Um, and and forget forgetting to like go through my regular routine so that I know that I because I have a way of doing things that I make sure my life works out yeah. when I'm alone. But when you have other people, you know you have to exactly. deal with it. What there's other so, things? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and they have different patterns. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so, and that's okay because I'm not about being regimented, but I like to get a good night's sleep, and I know what that is for me. But um, when I you know, and it's like to go to yoga today at noon, I was tired. I mean, you don't really feel like going to classes sometimes when you're tired, but it's the best thing you can do for yourself. And I went with the carrot dangling of Shavasana, which is the little nap at the end of yeah. yoga. I was so excited to go with, with the entire class. <laughs> you know what? It was the best class. It, it, it really, you know, kind of woke me up more. I'm you know, I'm still needing a good night's sleep, but it was it was the best thing I could have done for myself. So really identifying, you know, don't react, do what's best for you, do what you know is going to make you feel great in the end, even though it's hard to take the step to get in the car and drive there. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> you know, I love that. I love that, Amy. Um, you know, uh, when we're stuck, it's, it's actually uh, taking a small, small action step. Um, there's 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 many many people that refer to this, but really just one closing closing the activity that we're doing before we move on to the next, so that we can be completely present to that which is in front of us and have all of our resources pouring into that. And and studies continually show that the productivity is definitely fueled by clarity of focus and not having those distractions and being able to take that. And we'll talk more about this next week because this is getting into the systems for productivity, that there's a flow of the body that requires uh, our, our attention to honor it if we desire to get the most out of it while optimizing our personal health and wellness. So a yes. couple of things uh, just to kind of review on on what you were talking about before i feel like it's it, it's it's definitely worth exploring what goes on up here because as we've mentioned before in in other shows we are the landlord of the mind literally the landlord so what thoughts or themes have you given power to in 2015 that don't support the highest version of you moving forward that you want to unzip step out of and leave behind moving forward you're the landlord so who are you giving who or what are you giving free rent to uh that is literally trashing your interior castle that is that is just a a powerful thought to ponder upon in your time of meditation. I, I really feel that um, it, it's it's important um, to do that. We actually have a caller that, that's wanting to jump in here. And this is a little bit different than than what we've done before. Let's do but it. you know, my, my, my theme also is um, generosity. So generosity to what the, the moment holds. So I'm gonna open it up to, to Ralph, who's an inspirational speaker, a realtor. Ralph, we're trying to keep this to 20 minutes. So what do you have to say in, in, in about a minute? I'm gonna unlock here and invite you on to join us um, as we're, we're moving through this. Hey, Ralph, how are hey, you today? Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, I just jumped on and I, I love your topic. I'm in the Great. process of writing a book called Plant Seeds Carefully and Love the topic. Yeah, I mean, basically Napoleon Hill, 
our minds are like the fertile soil. Yes. Our thoughts, our words. Uh, spoke in New York to that, and that was an awesome experience. But love that. You, what you were talking about, I, I tell people, tell yourself a different story. Ah. Because no matter what it what it is, you were talking about your printer going haywire. You can get all worked up in in these stories. Uh, maybe a response. You know, I could make a comment and somebody respond to it totally different than I envisioned. And I could tell my story, myself a story that I'm not accepted. Mm-hmm. It's not a real, it's not reality. It's a story I'm telling myself. And Love that. most pain that we inflict and cause ourselves is the stories that we tell ourselves. Absolutely. I'm not good enough and, and so on and so forth. But yeah, yeah there's it, a lot of stories there. Uh, it could be. What's your story? This happens to me or yeah. nothing goes my way all those types of things but um but now yeah, my non-reaction has more to do with i refuse to go into story <laughs> i refuse setting, to the, setting the boundary not to be spun yes. really not the power, power, power we give to other people's responses right. and actions yeah. remembering but, that we are the storyteller plant seeds carefully because yeah that's yeah it. It, and that's the the the, the, the thought Somebody cuts you off, you can say a little prayer for them, or Absolutely. you can get angry, and that anger is going to, you know, be carried with you. You know, so I do what I call the eagle method, eagle, E G O, edging goodness, oh. and anything that's that's warm, caring, loving contributions. That is something that is going to help me become more of the person I want to become. Anger, oh. frustration, resentment, jealousy or negative things that push me away from the person that I want to be. So you are, you are speaking the truth, Ralph. You are speaking the truth. That is so and it's sort of it's giving your power away to that person too. It, it, you know, I mean, yeah. you know, so it's my, don't, don't, you know, I mean, they may not have even realized they did cut you off. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's having the assumptions. Really. Yeah. <laughs> that, that's, that's their problem. They cut me off. It's their problem if they think negatively. That person's opinion on me is not my reality. That's exactly it. Hold on, I'm just going to create a little more light here. That's exactly it. I love that, Ralph. So that's, that, not, that's exactly right. So mm-hmm. I invite you Saturday morning, um, seven o'clock uh, Central Time. I'm doing the blab. Plant seeds carefully. So. Ooh, what time? When it, say that one more time. I'm just pulling out. Seven some. o'clock Saturday morning. Okay. At central time. Plant seeds carefully. Plant seeds carefully. Awesome. Thank you, Ralph. I appreciate hey, you. You, have, you have a great day. Outstanding 2016. My Absolutely. word is mindset. You you got it. You got it. Oh, I like it. Okay. That's like awesome. That. Okay. So, so moving right along here to honor our time. That was some awesome information from Ralph. Very, very grateful for that. Thank you for that uh, reminder that we are the storytellers, just as we are the gatekeepers of our thought. Um, and, and, and what we allow to slither into our castle, whether it's worry, fear, doubt, or whether it's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, stepping away from jealousy, envy. These are all invitations. And so as, as we mentioned earlier this morning, I encourage you not to be hasty with your theme thought, to truly take it inside the castle, pull up the drawbridge, go before God in prayer and meditation. And I mentioned that I, I, I th- this whole theme for today's blab came from a prayer that I had in a meditation time that I had about a month before the new year, rather than saying, all right, God, I want this, this, and this. I flipped it and said, what am I here for? You know, as an advanced cancer conqueror, I'm grateful for another year of life, another day of life to chunk it down even further. So how can I uh, align the, the highest presentation of myself and, and offer that to the world around me, knowing that whatever I give out, as Ralph was saying, whatever you give out comes back to you. This is neurolinguistic programming. It's, it's a um, eliciting the state of behavior you desire to experience. Love evokes more love. Kindness evokes more kindness. Hatred and anger flare up hatred and anger. Quantum physically speaking, this is a, this is a science when you study the human energy field. The electromagnetic encephalograph shows people in different emotions and how you literally can either raise the, w- the waves and someone's mood and experience 
um, simply by holding ground, by holding that space that God has, has entrusted for you to occupy. So we encourage you to do that, to not be hasty with, with coming up with what is your theme thought for 2016 that represents who you desire to be as you are gifted with a new year of life. And so Amy shared hers, which was simplicity. Mine came just plopped in my lap and it's that of generosity. And it's not just generosity, uh, it includes generosity in terms of the needs, the physical needs of people that come in my way that I can, that I can physically do something about that. Um, I've already had that in my mind. We went down as a family, we do a family mission, we work, work with uh, people that are without homes um, downtown and we had the most incredible experience. I, I sent out a tweet that said, um, the power of a man who, or woman who has nothing but God, the prayer of a man over you who has nothing but God is so powerful because we had the experience of a man who was uh, without a home, uh, who wanted to pray over us after we helped to supply some of his needs. And and I'm, I'm carrying that in, in me, but it goes along with my theme of generosity. It's amazing. The way God made our bodies, you have the reticular activating system located in the brainstem and you get to choose your focus. Once you do, this RAS acts like a little lawyer and starts to hunt and gather information to back up your choice of focus. So Amy is simplicity. Mine was, was, is generosity. Uh, Ralph shared about telling your story. Don't, don't remember that you're in charge of the story that's written and you can choose to respond that aligns with the person you're committed to being or be spun into animal planet and have that reactive behavior, which doesn't, doesn't serve you or the highest good of all concerned. So Jumping in a little bit, and this is how we ended the, the last blab before I, I, I forgot to push the record button this morning. The generosity, I want to pull it through just a little bit because I invite you to do the same theme with same thing with the theme that, that God puts on your heart to write down. Once you get the word, God, what is my theme for 2016 that really showcases or or as we spoke about the definition of theme is to create an ambiance what is the ambiance that i want to create with my gifts my talents moving forward uh generosity for me also goes into the to the act of generous assumptions about other people rather than being reactive and accusatory and judgmental i i'm i'm really focused on offering uh mercy and, and grace and a generous assumption. Maybe they're hungry, angry, lonely, tired, or sick. Uh, and then I can offer that out as a, as a positive uh, gift offering of generosity. Uh, so to pull through your theme thought, not just with one word, what does it look like, feel like, and sound like to you? Once you have your theme thought, go behind closed doors, pull up the drawbridge, remove yourself from shiny objects. Take a deep breath, go before God, and, and simply get that vision of what is the theme thought for me for 2016. Once you have it, expand on it with a few sentences of journaling, write it on a card, have it as your screensaver, because this is your touchstone. And give yourself the mercy, this is part of generosity, when you fall, it's not a matter of if, <laughs> it's a matter of when, because we're human beings and we take one step forward, two steps back, Offer yourself generosity and mercy to begin again. The goal is, I believe, as we're gifted with each new day of life, to close the gap between our ability when we do slip to get back up quicker. So you slip and you fall. May it be quicker today than yesterday and my ability to get back up quicker, to hear the voice behind me saying, this is the way, walk in it. So as I did this morning, I'd like to do this again, Amy, because uh, it was kind of fun to get some of the responses. I'm gonna just simply say a few quotes here that were theme thoughts of some pretty famous people, some pretty cool rock stars throughout history that had themes. Um, Napoleon Hill is actually one of them. Um, so Ralph, uh, you you just wrote challenges guide us to where we need to go. What is one of your favorite quotes from Napoleon Hill? Because he was a thought leader, and and I have tons of his stuff. I absolutely love the Napoleon Hill Foundation as well. Um, so just to kind of pull through with more specificity on the theme thought that I <laughs> have right next to my computer is that don't fear generosity, for it is the very choice of response that unleashes the 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 peace 
that we enjoy, that we truly desire. Um, seek to be generous in your assumptions about others, along with the gifts you have been entrusted with to lighten the load of the oppressed and downcast. So I got a little more specific with that. One of my favorite quotes, and I'm putting this out there, is the, is the best and most beautiful things in the world cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Yeah. Cannot be seen or even touched. They must be felt with the heart. Yeah. So that is a quote that came from someone that didn't have sight or sound. Helen Keller, that came from her theme of her soul. And as mentioned this morning, these theme thoughts are simply opportunities for our soul to remember what our flesh forgets. That's why when someone throws out a theme thought and you quickly jot it down, oh, I want to remember that. I want to remember that. What would I dare to do if I knew I couldn't fail? Um, all things splendid have, have occurred uh, within the hearts of those who dared to believe that something inside them was superior to circumstance. Yeah. Bruce Barton. Uh, so you quickly write down these reminders of your soul recognizes it. Ah, yes, that's the person that I want to be moving forward. And so when you get these reminders, I invite you to linger within them, write them down, and then move forward with them in your radar so that you can identify and adjust. Another good one. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. If you judge people, you have no time to love them. And that is a very powerful theme thought. And you can, you can make any of these. I'm just throwing some of these out there. You can make any of these uh, your own and expand them on yourself. If you're judging people, you have no time to love them. And that was, of course, by uh, Mother Teresa. And she was a peacemaker in this world. And that was one of her theme thoughts that has cascaded throughout time and has, has, has come before our radar. This is a good one. Try not to become a man or woman of success, but rather become a man or woman of value. Try not to become a man or woman of success, but strive to become a man or woman of value. Wow, perhaps that's your theme thought. So maybe there's something in there for you with value. I'm going to focus more on those things that I highly value so that I can strip away or prune for growth, literally prune for growth. And Amy and I spoke about it this morning, how we love to garden. Why do you prune for growth? Why do you pull out the weeds to make more room for the fruit that that we're, we're called to to bring forth into the world with our gifts and talents so that was that famous quote was uh from einstein there's a, there's a lot of great reminders yeah. for our flesh and, and but i love that because of, and that that's a bit of my simplicity type thing because it's taking something away it's not doing something more yes. to get what you want it's it's like sometimes you just have to weed through so i love that you just mentioned the garden because uh, yeah. it is that it's like I I am allowed to be more who I want to be by subtracting rather than adding mm -hmm. something to absolutely. So uh, and and then it allows me to really be who I authentically am without you know if, if you're all cluttered up with too much on your plate and a busy house and a, all this is going on, I'm going to go out into the world not being present to the Absolutely. people I need. So I'm um, <laughs> oh, gotta go. That, that, that's what I told you that today. One of your one of your greatest oh, gifts I think, is this, this amazing so, ability to be here now. Right. So right. So and it allows you to be able to be perceptive and kind and thoughtful when you're present. When you're distracted with fears and and anxieties and regrets uh, fearing the future regrets from the past, then you can't, you, you literally physiologically cannot access that part of the brain that is responsible for compassion and understanding. So, so the, that clarity of focus is not only a gift to you and your inner peace, but it's also a gift to the, to the world around you. So there's a poor signal, Amy, I probably can still hear you. Can I still hear you? I think so. Yeah, I can still can hear you, you but I but that's cool. As long as we, we can still hear you, perhaps you'll, you'll pop back in here. Um, another, another good one. Um, try not to become a man of success or a woman of success, but become a man or, or a woman of value is, is a great one. Um, there was another one too that uh, 
of, of course, the famous one that I mentioned from Henry Ford, whether you believe you can or you can't, you write. That one reveals such, such a powerful mindset. Stress is the power we give to outside circumstance to define our worth, our value, and our capability. Uh, whether you believe you can or you can't, you're right. This is why it's very interesting when Jesus walked the earth, because before a miracle was unleashed, he would often pose the question, what do you want me to do for you? What do you want me to do for you? He did this He did this many different times. Specifically, I'm thinking of the time with a blind man. Obviously, the man, the man who was blind. Obviously, the man who was blind, you can see his blindness, and everybody acknowledged that around. But yet Jesus walks up and says, what do you want me to do for you? Whether you believe you can or you can't, you are right. There is that aspect of faith that is essential to unleash the miracles that we seek on a day-to-day -day basis. So... I love what Ralph just commented on. He said, I used to complain about the weeds in my garden until I realized it is God's way of telling me to spend more time in the garden. Wow, so beautiful. That's beautiful, Ralph. That is beautiful. It is. It's, it's really those, um, dear God, give us the ability to linger and slow down so that we, we don't walk by those moments that will bring us the deepest peace and sense of purpose that are literally going right in front of our radar. So to take time. That's the miracle right before yeah. us uh, that of, of growth. And especially in our areas where, you know, we have these long summer days, it is, you can watch the flowers open. You can watch the plant grow three yeah. inches in a day sometimes. Oh, Crazy. It's, it's so powerful. It's and I love the story. I think it's the Asian uh, bamboo that is uh, dormant for five years and then grows 90 feet every uh, short period of time, like 30 days. I mean, it's crazy. I don't know if I'm, I'm right on that, but it's a crazy amount. You can literally watch it grow after five years of being dormant. So for those of you who are, who are feeling frustrated with um, that, uh, oh, uh, Ralph said he used, he used this before as well. This is a powerful metaphor, right? That it gives us, it gives us the opportunity to be patient, um, understanding that we, we go through those times when um, God is more concerned with character development than the shiny car. So one of my prayers has been, dear God, withhold territory from me until I've developed the character to handle it successfully. And that's that's definitely one a prayer that came through the dark night of the soul of, of, of being carried through five years of treatment with the cancers. Give me the character. I want the character because I get to bring the character with me beyond the pine box. So with that said, we're going to bring this blab to a close. We're going to be back, God willing, we'll be back next week and uh, be focused on, I, I really feel that productivity is something that we we, we can um, explore, particularly jumping into the new year and there's certain systems to make that happen. So Ralph, thank you so much for your presence and your wisdom today, for joining us today. Very, very grateful for your presence. And so we did record this, so we will have, have the link. And if you're listening to this now, you are listening to the recording. So enjoy practicing. And uh, as, as we mentioned before, explore the ambiance that you want to create that showcases the best version of you. Your sense of inner peace and your sense of purpose will literally be uncorked and resurrected to the front lines. It's amazing when you shift from the inside out, the lives and the multitudes of people that you will buoy up. Uh, I can't remember who it was that uh, said that one quote, that one tide raises all ships. And uh, it might have been Roosevelt, but one tide raises all ships, all ships. So, so be that choice of, of tide to lift up. Uh, the lives that you've been entrusted to inspire in this world. So Amy, any closing thoughts? Love your your theme thought of simplicity. Mine was generosity, not just with physical things, including that, but assumptions uh, toward other people and using the being generous with the gifts and talents that you've been blessed with to lift up the downcast and those who are weary. Well, you know, I actually um, started thinking about it after we spoke this yeah, morning. You have extra and time, right? <laughs> Yeah, I posed it to my closed Facebook group of women, and I said, "You guys, anybody up for a little challenge of uh, simplification and and let's let's declutter?" And, and they were all jumping on it. So I'm really excited to sort of you know throw a challenge out there um, to to everyone to sort of 
think about what they can do to simplify their life so that they can live more because it's really about I was reading something the other day about uh, the regrets of people who are in hospice and stuff, the, the things that they regret that they didn't take care of. And it was always about, I worked too much. I didn't have time for my family. I, I, what, I didn't really do the meaningful things. I was doing what I felt like I should be doing. So we really have to think about that and, and think about, you know, if you were exiting or are you, or are you happy with your choices that you were so worried about the little stuff? Let's, let's really play big here. Um, and, and get deep and meaningful with people. Um, it, Cause that's all that matters really. I completely agree with that. And, and very well said, my friend. Uh, I'm, I'm actually uh, writing down because I I'm, wanna make sure to mention this, um, a body support to help those people uh, who are going through stress, high stress, inflammation, as well as lack of sleep. Those are the three fuels for disease. Um, within the body. And this is something that came on into my space about a year ago when I was uh, literally seeking and, and praying for those specific things to um, keep my body healthy and to step away from reoccurrence and uh, dropped in my lap, uh, divinely inspired. And so Amy, what happened to you when you, when you step, stepped away from this? And then now, and now it's like the, the, the chocolate, we got the chocolate now. We've got the, the stress support and, and we've got the, the inflammation, right? All we're going for is, is daily body support for optimal wellness. So I'm going to put this down here. Um, All right. Well, I think these are products that actually, I know they work because when I was taking them, they worked. And when I didn't take them for a while, I felt, I just felt it quickly. And I was like, what is wrong with me? And then I realized I hadn't been taking yeah. it. So um well in company i've got the indulge well chocolates that i've got the bag on my desk as well because my little uh snack to myself before i go to my class tonight is going to be some cacao dark chocolate <laughs> with turmeric and really yummy things in it that are going to support my yeah, body and, so, the turmeric uh, and, and the flaxseed so Two, right. two, two great elements there but you know how many people are stressed out inflamed or, or who who can't sleep that uh, addresses the major, the major fuels for disease within the body. And as an advanced cancer conqueror who was given five years, and I am literally entering my 10th year, highly recommend you give notice to those three things to, to keep those down for optimal health and wellness. So enjoy practicing and resurrecting your theme thought to the front lines. What we also invite you guys to do who are listening to this is to tweet and include us on it. We'll retweet it to create an invitation for people to create those theme thoughts moving into 2016. So what's your theme thought? Once you've given that time and attention, simply tweet it out, include us, we'll retweet it, and we'll, we'll get this invitation uh, going to create more positivity in our responses to life. God bless you, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Amy. Thanks so much. I'm gonna stop the recording Thanks, now. <laughs>